and welcome to Candidates Forum 2021. I'm your host, Larry Curtis, and we are pleased to have with us in studio today a candidate for Ward 3 School Committee, Jared Homer. Did that right? That's Jared. Right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you believe that you're the best candidate for Ward 3 School Committee. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, so I am a lifelong resident of Brockton. Um, I've uh, attended Brockton Public Schools. I have three children currently attending in school in three different schools in the city. Um, so my kids have had excellent experiences so far in Brockton. Uh, my oldest is now at South Middle School. Uh, so we've made a transition from elementary to middle school. Uh, my middle child is at the Angelo School uh, in the TAG program, and my youngest is finishing um, at the Kennedy uh, for elementary. She just began uh, third grade this year. So um, I think based on our experiences in the school, working with the teachers whom we've come to know very well, and um, having a chance to have the kids participate in activities and enrichment activities in the after school time, um, I think this is an opportunity for me to give back and to help other families so that their children can have an experience and enjoy their time the way my children did. Awesome. It's, uh, pretty spread out there with the three <laughs> kids. All right. A little bit. Okay. Uh, we've got a series of questions we're just going to go into. First question we're going to deal with is what do you believe is the most important issue facing the school committee today? Why? And what recommendations do you have moving forward? Okay. So I think obviously coming out of a, a, a couple of um, tumultuous years, to say the least, of the pandemic, um, I think getting this, the students back into um, a sense of normalcy in the school is probably one of the most important things that school committee can work on is supporting the teachers, um, supporting the families, and then supporting the kids. Um, I work as a high school guidance counselor in, in Taunton High School, and I've been there for about 14 years now. Um, what I'm seeing at the high school level is um, students who have experienced trauma, students who are coming from a point of um, disruptions to their daily life at home. And it's a big concern for me that um, those students can view their high school and their daily experience as, as a normal routine, um, a safe place to be, and um, that they can you know, continue to move ahead and reflect on this pandemic and their experience um, seeing that the schools and the, the staff and the faculty were supporting them yeah. and working to make sure that they were safe. Um, I think in hindsight, I hope that that's what the, the children will see as, as they age when they look back on their experiences. Mm -hmm. Try and keep them in school as much as possible. Uh, try and support their needs. Be as safe as possible. Um, you know, the ideal situation is in a classroom with teachers. I think we did the best we could in Brockton with my kids doing online mm -hmm. classes and remote learning, but we know that that was far from ideal. And I know from my experience, my children yeah. struggled mm -hmm. with that. Right, exactly. I think that's a very commendable, uh, important issue uh, to look at. And I happen to have been at a, a meeting where Superintendent Thomas had made the um, comments about how the ninth grade freshmen today entering high school right. literally missed their eighth grade middle school years Absolutely. and now they've gone from a middle school right. jumped into a high school Straight missing a whole school. year it's you know it's a the, big the, challenge the challenge there <laughs> sure so i i would agree with that um the COVID issues obviously have, have had an impact on the education of our students do you agree with the school's administration mask mandate policy Sure. I mean, I think in terms of what the, the school administration sets in terms of a tone for, for our students in Brockton is following the guidance of the, the health professionals. Um, I, I think it's, it's a health policy issue. Um, I was at a meeting, the school committee meeting the other night, and I was very happy to hear um, the statistics on the percentage of Brockton residents who are fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And um, the superintendent, I believe, is the one who mentioned that the large, uh, one of the large percentages of unvaccinated are the underage children that, that can't get the vaccination yet. So hopefully we're moving in that direction too. And like I said before, I think um, whatever we can do to mitigate safety concerns, I mean, certainly there are kids who come from households where parents might be on oxygen, parents might have, um, you know, serious illnesses. And I think having that opportunity to keep those kids remote for one extra semester, or an extra year, whatever it takes, mm -hmm. um, to al allow a little bit of opportunity for parents to make those choices is, is one of the best decisions. You know, I think it's, there's not a one size fits all approach to, to um, sure. tackling COVID, mm -hmm. but I think we've done a pretty good job offering a couple of opportunities. Um, Brockton's offering that remote option that we didn't offer down in Taunton where I am. So okay. I mean, we're, we're seeing that we're handling it different ways. I kind of appreciate that Brockton's trying to keep things in house and try and keep the kids 
together um, with their classmates as much as possible. So whether it's on a remote All class right. or in, well, it's great. <laughs> oh, no, fantastic, you know. Um, what are your failings on standardized testing? Is it necessary? Should we have it? Sure. <laughs> right. So standardized testing, I mean, I think uh, I remember when it started. I was in high school when it started, and I remember being in, uh, in the study halls <laughs> waiting for the younger kids to take the test in my senior year. Um, it's, so it's been around for quite a long time. Um, I understand the need for um, benchmarks and, and a, a measuring stick to kind of compare progress from year to year. I think that's certainly an important thing. Um, I think that um, luckily we come from a region where we value education and I think that yeah. Massachusetts consistently you know sets the tone and sets the pace for education in the country and I think that Brockton as a school district you know I think we can get back into that national spotlight too as a, as a district that is forward-thinking um, inclusive um, I think standardized test scores show a quick snapshot of how kids are performing during the school year um, it doesn't tell the whole story, but I think that, um, you know. Would, would, that, uh, would that snapshot be more of how the kids are doing or reflection on what the teachers right. are doing? <laughs> right, and, and, and I think it definitely does. It, do, it does um, highlight and, and spotlight some of the areas for improvement for the, for the educators, but I think it also, um, especially, you know, with the, the, co the MCAS scores from this past year when students had just returned to the classrooms mm -hmm. for a brief time, um, some kids opted out of taking the test. I think you had a much smaller um, uh, cross-section of, of the student population taking okay. the test. Mm -hmm. So we know that when you compare performance from last year to previous years, plus, I mean, I think they're, they're continuously modifying the MCAS. We have MCAS 2.0 now compared to the previous MCAS, the pencil and paper one. Now we're online. Yeah. Um, it's not a very easy task and, you know, having proctored it in Taunton as well and kind of watching how students are struggling with the technology and, and versus the pencil and paper version, I think there's a lot of pressure put on the test. I think the kids feel that pressure. It's not ideal. Um, there are a few other standardized tests that kids yep. can take mm -hmm. that, that um, I'm thinking of um, the national one that is a, it's a, a random selected student population that participates on that for a national score. Um, I think it would be interesting to kind of see, um, you know, how much longer the, the MCAS 2.0 version is, is going to be um, a relevant test before they add any additional segments right mm -hmm. now with only English, math, and biology. I mean, it's leaving out all of the other learning opportunities that the kids are engaged okay. in, and they're not being measured on a standardized test. So. Mm -hmm. It's, it's tricky. I think the standardized testing is a tricky component, but I think that that, I, I wouldn't want the standardized test experience to be the, the takeaway for the students in the schools. Okay. I don't want that to yeah. be the overriding concern, the fear, the worry about how they're going to perform on the test. I'd rather have the students focus on engaging with their teachers, learning mm -hmm. with their classmates, and building school communities. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Thank you. Um, since its previous height nearly a decade ago, as a recognized leader in closing the achievement gap. Brockton has experienced a continual decline in academic outcomes according to the most recent state data which was compiled for over the six year period up to 2020. 10 of the 21 schools now rank in the lowest 10% of Massachusetts schools. What recommendations would you have in assisting this turnaround? Thank you. So I, I think um, one of the community members had attended a meeting um, a couple of weeks ago at the Arnon School to talk about um, the ESSER three um, relief funding and made a, a, a pretty good recommendation about um, smaller communities and, and, and trying to unite the kids. Um, I've, I've been thinking about activities. I think that's one way to try and, and, and improve the schools. So and if I, if I mm -hmm. can just stop, sure. could you give a little background on what the ESSER three money is about? Sure. That the yeah. Listener understands. Yeah. So, so ESSER three, um, Brockton has a little more than $30 million of additional support money coming in to try and... and um, Directly a, to a, the school system. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, and it's earmarked for specific activities and specific programs that it needs to be applied towards. Um, so. I think if you have the opportunity to help the students, um, you know, as we get a little bit further away from the restrictions of COVID to, to come together and work together, I think that that's one of the ways that students learn best too, is, is by working together in groups sure. uh, mm -hmm. versus, um, you know, strictly just listening, receiving information, recording it, parroting it back that way. So I think when the kids are, have the opportunity to engage in dialogue in the classroom setting and engage in dialogue in small, small groups, small communities, I think they learn better. I think that um, 
you know, we have the opportunity to now to focus on um, pushing that with the, the middle school grades, the younger grades, and try and get them ready for their high school experience, and again, with those tests that they're going to take. And I think if we have um, a, a focus on, on the future, and where those students want to be, I think that's one of the things that I would recommend to um, is that I want the students again to enjoy their experience in high school, to engage with their teachers, but I really do think it's important for the kids to have a plan for where they want to end up. Um, there's a certain under, uh, it's a natural inclination to kind of think about where you are right now in the moment, mm -hmm. but I think it's really helpful as a high school guidance counselor, I always want to plan ahead with the juniors and the seniors that I'm working with and have them think, where do you want to end up? Where do you want to be down the road? This is why you need to prepare in your lessons in ninth grade. This is why 10th grade really matters to you. This is what this test is going to do for you. You can't get your high school diploma without this test, but it's not all about the test, it's where do you want to end up? Are you going to be a firefighter? Are you going to be a police officer? Are you going to be a business owner? You know, what, are we connecting you to the right lessons, the right material? I think that a forward thinking approach um, and, and a, a process where we can have the students talk to one another, talk to their teachers, and think about um, success in the future. I think that success minded, that positive minded approach, I think is what's going to help lead the way to get them back to the top. All right, thank you. As a ward school committee member, you are required to vote on issues in support of the overall education system. How would you vote if the vote you were to cast was not going to be favorable to your specific ward? Um, it's definitely, <laughs> I, I, I come from a, a perspective of a parent um, and an educator, so I, I don't really have the experience of um, voting on, on these issues. Um, in this in this regard, I think my experience that I can draw from is sort of um, my experience in the schools and thinking about what's best. I think I've seen how the school communities had to make some really difficult choices in the past, um, and I really appreciate that. I know firsthand from you know friends of the family and 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 um, people in the community who ended up losing their jobs during difficult budget sure. cuts. Mm -hmm. um, I think. I would want a school committee representative to think about what's best for all the kids. Um, and I think I, I, I would like to serve the city and help in any way I can. I know that if that means that um, there's a difficult choice that might affect my kids directly, I think you have to kind of remove yourself from that position. You have to think about what's good for the city, what's good for the students okay. in middle school in around the other neighborhoods right. and not just the ward. Um, I think it would be wrong to kind of put all the eggs in Ward 3 basket, you know, mm -hmm. and, and think about it from that perspective. Certainly you want to be attentive to the constituents and what you're hearing from your neighbors and the people who live near you, but I think that there are also, you know, broad concerns throughout the whole city, as you mentioned before, with school performance um, across mm -hmm. the, all of the, the schools. So I think it's a, it's a matter of trying to support the whole student yep. population okay. and, and be aware of, of what the kids need in in all the cities, in, uh, in, sorry, all the neighborhoods in the city. Okay. okay, we've got about a minute and a half for you to kind of look into the camera and <laughs> convince the voters of Ward 3 as to sure. why you're the best candidate for the Ward 3 school committee. I believe that's an open seat, isn't it, this term? Uh, it's an open seat this term. <laughs> um, you know, I think, um, so I was happy to be approached several times by some friends who had asked me to run. Um, it wasn't something that I think I initially would have jumped out and, and, and thought about doing, but um, I think I do bring um, experience as an educator, um, experience working in different roles in schools, um, and as a parent, having kids in different schools as well, and getting feedback from teachers and from children in the school. Um, I think I'd like to just be able to serve the community that has served my children so well, so I'm happy to, to view this as an opportunity to give back and to um, help uh, Brockton schools. Awesome. Yeah. Don't forget to ask them for your vote. <laughs> Please vote. <laughs> Please vote me on November 2nd. <laughs> All right, Jared, I want to thank right. you for taking time coming in, sharing your views on the Ward 3 School Committee and the school system overall in general. Uh, on behalf of all of us here at Brockton Cable Access, we want to say thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this candidate's forum. And remember to get out and vote on Tuesday, November 2nd. It's an important vote for our city. Thank you. Thank you.